Hello again and welcome back to Operations Management. We're talking about capacity analysis and I have a, another problem for you. This is supplementary problem number two and this is going to be divided into three parts because it's going to be fairly comprehensive. So why don't we get started. We're going to be talking about the amazing shed company. This company produces three different kinds of sheds, basic, superior, premium. Each of the sheds use the same resources fabrication teams, assembly teams, paint teams, and inspection teams. The company has received orders for 20 basic, 10 superior, and 10 premium sheds to be completed in one week. We're going to assume five days in the week. The question is, can they meet their order requirement and why? And what is the minimum number of teams needed for each resource? So the information about the shed and uh, the shed company and their different resource pools is on this slide here. You can see we have four different resource pools, fabrication, assembly, paint, and inspection. And there are three different sheds that are being done. So they are uh, different unit loads for each type of shed. The basic shed has two hours for fabrication, three for assembly, one for paint, one and a half for inspection. Superior, two and a half, three and a half, one and a quarter, 1.5 respectively. The premium shed, two and a half, 3.8, two and one and a half respectively. So you can see that each different kind of shed has a different unit load. In the fabrication area, there are four teams available three for assembly, two for paint, and two for inspection. And when we look at the number of hours available per team per day, you can see there's seven hours available in fabrication, seven and a half assembly, seven for paint, and seven, sorry, six for inspection. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the average unit load is. We have three different kinds of sheds and each one has a different unit load, so we need to find out what that average unit load is. To do that, we have to take a weighted average. We know that we're doing 20 basic, 10 superior, and 10 premium sheds in the week, so that gives us a total of 40 sheds. So our product mix is actually 50% basic, 25% superior, and 25% premium. Using this product mix, we can then calculate the average unit load for each of the different uh, resource pools. So when we get to fabrication, our weighted average unit load is two and a quarter hours, assembly three and a third, paint 1.31, inspection 1.5. And if you look at the bottom half of the slide, you can see how that is calculated. So now that we know how much time we need per shed, the next thing we need to do is figure out how much time we have available. So to calculate the available time per day, we take the number of teams for each resource times the number of hours available per team per day, and that's how we get our available time per day. So we have four teams available in fabrication. Each team works seven hours, and that gives us 28 hours. We do the same calculations for assembly, paint, and inspection. So you can see those hours on the bottom left of the slide. Next, we then have to calculate the capacity per day. Capacity, how much time do we have? How much time do we need? We have 28 hours available and we need two and a quarter hours per shed. So that gives us 12.44 sheds in fabrication. We have 22 and a half hours in assembly and we need three and a third, so that gives us 6.77. And for paint, we have 14 hours available. Divide that by 1.31, that's 10.67. And for inspection, we have 12 hours available. Divide by one and a half, that's eight. So that gives us our capacity per day and we have five days in a week. So we multiply our capacity per day by five, and that tells us how much we can get done in the week. And as you can see, our bottleneck is assembly. We can only do 33.8 sheds in a week when we required to do 40. 
So our bottleneck is assembly right there, 33.8 sheds. So when we look at this, we said, can they meet their order requirement and why? Well, no, they cannot because the maximum number of sheds that they can produce is 33.8. So now we know that they can't meet the requirement. But the next question is, how many teams for each resource should we have? So let's take a look at that. Now, when we do the number of resources needed, we look at things a little bit differently. Instead of how much time do we have and how much time do we need, we try and figure out with how much time overall do we need for those 40 sheds. Then we work backwards to get the number of resources needed. So when we look at the time needed per week, we know we need 2.25 hours per shed in fabrication, and we need to produce 40 sheds. So 40 times 2.25 is 90 hours. We do the same type of calculation for each of the other teams. The assembly, we need 3.33 hours per shed. We multiply that by 40, that's 133.2. For paint, we end up with 52.4 hours and inspection, 60. Now we break that down to time needed per day. So we know how many hours per week. We're going to divide that by five days in the week. So now that tells us how many hours are needed per day. So 90 divided by five is 18. 133.2 divided by five is 26.64. 52.4 divided by five is 10.48. And 60 divided by five is 12. So this is how much time we need per day. We also know how many hours are available per team per day. That was given originally. If we divide those two, the time needed per day by the number of hours available per team per day, we end up with the number of teams we need. So 18 divided by seven is 2.57. 26.64 divided by seven and a half is 3.55. 10.48 divided by 7 is 1.5, and, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So when we look at it overall, we currently have four fabrication teams, and we only need 2.57. Our assembly, which was our bottleneck, we only have three teams, but we actually need 3.55. Paint, we currently have two, we need 1.5. Inspection, we currently have two and we need to. So we have excess capacity in fabrication and not enough capacity in assembly. So when we're thinking about making changes to the resources available for the Amazing Shed Company, we would be thinking about reducing the number of teams in fabrication and increasing the number of teams in assembly. So when we think about capacity analysis, this really helps us understand that if we place the right resources in the right locations, it really improves our throughput. I'll see you for part two.